What's going on, guys? Uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, Flying Brian's Garage. So tonight, I would say today, but it is night. Um, I actually just got done with uh, part one, um, except for the ride. Uh, I just got it finished, though. Um, we're up here in a different part of the. Well, really, this is the automotive shop, and since if you watch uh, part one, you'll know the reason why we're up here. Um, it's a little bit of a last moment thing, but uh, wasn't anything that I wanted to deal with, so we're in here for now. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start working on our transaxle for my red mower. This is the second part of the series. So let's go ahead and get into today's video, or tonight's video, and start on our transaxle. Alright, so we have got our transaxle, our donor transaxle. It is a MST206 six-speed manual shift transaxle that is going up in here in place of the hydrostat that used to be in it. So we have got our braking system off, which took quite a bit. It was a little bit stuck on there. Um, I'll have to clean that up before I put it back on. We've got all of our bolts out around the trans, except for these two that hide down in here. I've got to pull this pulley off to access it. Um, I'm also going to need to find where neutral is on this transmission before I pull it apart. I'd like to pull them apart in neutral. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to continue on tonight. It's getting kind of late. I don't know if I'm going to call it yet or I'm going to continue on. I think it's like 11 o'clock so um, I'm probably going to call it and just come back out here tomorrow and get to it. So. I might do a little bit and just all that good stuff, but I'll I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, it is the next day. Um, we actually just got done writing the first project. Y'all got to go check that video out. Um, it was a pretty good video. There's a little bit of unsuspecting stuff that came about, which is uh, I have that on film too, so that'll be in the video. Um, otherwise, runs and rides great. I might need to uh, adjust the linkage a little more for the throw, but it's pretty decent. Um, it's pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with it. But y'all go be sure to check out that video. I'll probably put it in the ending right there where the videos are. I'll probably put part one there on the end of part two so y'all be sure to look for that check it out and all that good stuff all right so we got our mascot out here today or i guess i should say our supervisor what's up marshall what's up buds okay so last night we were on our transaxle we had just got all the bolts pulled except for the two under the pulley so what we need to do today get that pulley off a, like a snap ring in there get that pulley off get those two bolts out pull this cover apart inspect weld our spider gears reinstall that thing back together now reassemble it I should say then uh, freshly install it in our new mower so I'll give you a walk around on this thing real quick, and then we're going to get to our project for the day. Okay, so if y'all have been watching the channel regularly, you would recognize this mower. This was my wife's mower. Um, we fixed this up for her specifically, and then I did a few things to it for the yard, as in pitch ball and a couple other things, you know lights and bumpers and stuff 
so. We kept it original, the way I had it, with the bumpers and the light on the uh, hood. It's still got the same gas pedal. It's still got the little compartment under it. It's still got the rear rack and the exhaust and, and the tow ball. I did not want to do away with any of those things. I really it like the way this is set up. There's only a couple things I need to do in here <clears throat> before I put this transaxle in place. I need to come in here and pull this closer to the frame and get a strap welded in for that. Um, we're going to have to lift. Unfortunately, we're going to have to lift the tank and the fenders here along with the seat to fit our new 26s. <clears throat> and we're going to try to integrate it into this shifter if possible with the parts that I have. Um, the only things that are different about this tractor now number one this muffler right here go bye bye don't want it I put that back there for her that way it wouldn't rattle her brain I need brain stimulation I need mine to rattle a little, a little bit so that's gotta go um, number two seat she got her nice comfortable seat and I'm still stuck with shitty seat but this is actually the seat off of the mud slut, the original tow rig here. We did a little seat swapping around and uh, she didn't like the original seat that was on the Murray that she has now. She liked her high back, comfortable, springy seat. So I took her seat off of that, put it on the Murray, took the seat off the Murray and I put it on the mud slut because that's the one that needs the best seat. This is if it all came down to it and I had to keep only like two mowers, I'd probably keep hers and, and the, the tow rig here. And everything else would have to get sold off, gave away, donated, whatever. Um, but those would be the two that I keep. So I'm going to put my best parts on those and everything else is going to kind of get in parts, you know, best that I can give it. So this seat is off the mud slut. This is just going to be a mud uh, and a work rig, but it's going to be more of a, a, a toy. So I wanted it to have not the best parts, but something good. We also switched our front wheels. We took the wheels off the John Deere is what we did. Because she wanted her wheels and tires she only had 18s on the front on here. I wanted 20s. These are 20s. Um, so what I did was I switched over. So I would have my wheels on here. She'd have her wheels on hers. So these have 20s on the front. It'll have 26s on the rear. I know y'all recognize those wheels and tires. If y'all seen videos of John Deere mud mower, then you recognize those wheels and tires. Now, for the grand reveal, we have a 17 horsepower, high performance industrial commercial engine. Now, I was a little skeptical about the high performance, because I was like, yeah, that's probably a load of shit. Well, not so much, actually. Um, the compression ratios in these engines are actually higher. Um, usually with a healthy Briggs, um, I usually get about 115 to 120 PSI turning it over with a hot, hot battery. This is almost 150 PSI with a hot, hot battery. The compression ratios are different for sure. 
this thing's going to have some power. So, I like that this engine goes on this because it's just, it, it, this is a beefy engine. I have heard this thing run. If y'all want to see a video on this running real quick, y'all can pause this, go back to the video of the revival, the last revival that I did. It was a 95 Murray wide body LT. Um, and this is the engine off of it. Good engine. The only thing that was wrong with it was the starter was uh, bound up and the carburetor was all froze up. I took those apart, cleaned everything up, checked the gap and the uh, coil and everything, cleaned all that up, did some wiring, and I had this thing popped off running and was riding it around the yard. So, for that we know that this engine is good. We also have the transaxle that we pulled off of the Murray. It's going to go on the General. That's actually, that is not the transaxle that came out of the Murray. It, this one is right here. It's going to have to be locked as well. But I'm going to use that one on the General Lee here instead. So y'all have to stay tuned for that video to drop. I'll probably be working on the general as soon as I'm done with my mower. So let's go ahead and get to work today. Get this done so we can go ahead and have our mower back and ride out like we should. So let's uh Let's get our pulley off here, get these two bolts out, pop this case apart, and see what we're working with here. I know this is a good transaxle. This one has been used. This one's the one that Shaggy had in the lower dirt track Murray that he built, and now he's going a different route, so he parted it out. He let me uh, have the transaxle for what I need, and... Uh, all that good stuff so yeah let's go ahead and get this part see what we're working with all right about ready to crack our case open so what we're gonna do we're gonna take a screwdriver and we're gonna lightly start kind of tapping the edge This one's going to be a little hard. Looks like somebody has been in it before. Took me a minute to crack this thing open. Um, I did that off camera. I didn't want to spend 30, 45 minutes trying to open a case on film. So, this thing is ready.
It's inside of a case. It's in good shape. As you can see, actually, let me pull y'all off the camera mount. A little bit, get y'all a little bit better view of this thing. Man, that case is in really good shape. I thought we locked these spider gears, but we didn't. I totally forgot we didn't. So. Yeah, case is in real good shape. So, that being said, let's get in here and get these spider gears tacked in place. All right, folks. So, done quite a bit. Um, you know, we got the case apart, but we got the case clean, at least the bottom side, nice and clean. Got the gasket area cleaned up and all that stuff. So, uh, also have our diff welded. What I did was I cleaned the case first, stuffed the diff down in there, got it centered up, welded it solid all the way around, then, uh, Took it back out, cleaned it off, cleaned the case again, and uh, all we're left with here is the top part of the case. Um, I probably will start putting parts of the bottom back in it, but for now, we're going to go over here. We have a piece of metal, and we are going to integrate it into a exhaust hanger. Probably tack it in a couple places and then tack it in a couple places. So let's get that done real quick. That way we can have the exhaust in place because it is actually a little, a little wiggly. And I'd like to, uh, ooh, I'd like to fill that hole. That's what I'd like to do. Damn. Maybe some of my weld blew out. Well, we'll get that hole filled. And we'll get this fixed. And there's one more thing I need to do. The uh, bolt up there on the top of the exhaust flange. If you see, it's not all the way in because that head is stripped. I'm thinking about welding another bolt to it. A short bolt with an actual hex head. And driving it the rest of the way in. So, it ain't going to look perfect, but it's a toy and a work rig. It ain't going to look perfect. So, let's just get it done the um, best we can with what we got. So, we're going to go ahead and weld up our exhaust here. Get that hole filled up. And then we'll move on to finishing up our transmission. And then hopefully today, we will be installing said transmission. I got my welder on its lowest setting, and that gives me a good bit to where I don't burn through this thin, thin piping here. First things first, we're going to go ahead and fill in a hole. Exhaust hanger in place up top. And we don't have good ground on that body. Okay. Let me see here. Honestly, I'm not sure why. Thank you. 
<coughs> it's nice and sturdy. <coughs> Alright guys, well, in the process of going over this uh, body here in the frame to where I was going to put the transaxle, I noticed that the tire has rubbed a soft spot in our gas tank. So that causes and solves the problem at the same time. Now, while it solves the problem of my tire clearance, it causes the problem of no tank. So we need to figure out, one, we need to get this tank out. I'm draining it now. Got the hose ran down through there and I'm draining it. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for a tank for one. Two, we have to figure out getting this out. So I gotta get these fenders off of tractor so I can get the tank out and then drop the fenders back on so that's gonna be a lot of work and we're still in the process of getting the transaxle put together so oh man one problem after another I mean I'm glad I found it now but I wish I didn't find it at all because it'd be so convenient just to be able to keep using this tank all right guys here's what we're looking at we have our fender stripped off we got our tank off and out of the way everything's been cleaned and prepped I had to go through some of the wiring here because there were some sensors that need to be grounded out to the body to be able to start the ignition so I went ahead and grounded those out hopefully they're done the right way um, there's our fenders over there there's our seat and there's our parts um, we're just about to start reassembling our trans so we can reinstall or not re but install it into its new home being this tractor I think I'm gonna leave the fenders off for now that way I can kind of do what I need to do um, in there you know kind of gives me good access and everything so I can you know, do what I need to do so I'm gonna leave that off while we put our transaxle up in here so let's go ahead and get it reassembled so we can get it back up into the tractor and get everything hooked up and see how it's going to work out. Alright, as you see here, we have our trans reassembled. We've got new fluid. Um, our fluid that we had laying around. We also have our um, RTV spread around. So we're going to go ahead and put our top case on and fasten it back down.
this thing real quick. Up, oh, I gotta do the brakes. You know, I'm kind of glad I thought about that. I gotta do the brakes. So, after we do the brakes, we'll be installing this thing. So, I'm gonna do that real quick off camera, and then uh, we will get to the installation of this transaxle. Alright, so, we're fixing getting ready to call it a night. Um, I kind of cleaned up and put everything up that I was using. Um, we did get the transaxle reassembled, installed into the unit. Um, I had to drop the brackets down because it needed a lift to be able to line up with the pulley system. I welded that nice and solid um, on both sides, of course. We had just got done with all of that and got our brakes working. Um, wheels and tires are on. It looks pretty damn good. So it has a lift in the rear. I don't know if we're going to need to lift the front to compensate. We will find out. Um, other than that, it looks, looks pretty mean. looks pretty aggressive. I dig it. Can't wait to get it on the ground and see what it actually really, really looks like. But so far, so good. So tomorrow, we'll uh, come back out here and focus on some more stuff. Getting the belt system all right and tight and ready to go. Wiring and fenders back on and seat and... All that good stuff. I say we should have it off the lift in a day or two. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. And uh, we will see you guys in the morning. Alright guys. We are back out here. It is the next day. Um, this is where we left off last night with the transaxle in with the new lift on it. Um, and tires. Brakes hooked up. Um, we do have to figure out a shifter for this. I think that'll probably be next step is figuring out a, uh, well, no, that can't be next step. I'm going to have to do pulley first. Pulley belts, get that situated, then get the body back on it. Then I can do the uh, shifter. So let's go ahead and get started for today. Um, I do believe we'll probably get started with the pulley figure that out and then move on to the belt get that situated and then once all that's done we can start putting our body back on do our shifter and honestly it's done that's it so let's get to work for today see how far we can get well this turned out better than expected um, found a belt right size clutching system is disengaging um, we're gonna have to do something about that pulley but the bottom one actually lined up better than the top one so I don't have to worry about this whole stuff eating into our belt everything is nice and lined up I mean look how straight that is yeah buddy Come get your boy. So. Looks like I've been having a little bit of a transmission leak. It's okay. I expected it anyway. Not that big of a deal. Um, but we got that done. We also pulled off our stock choke and the plate here. Um, Went ahead and reversed our spring, put our bolts back in, got our throttle cable hooked up to the governor arm, and got our choke hooked up to the choke. So, really we're not far from having this thing going. We need to run our pump line to the vacuum in the front we do have a light to hook back up 
I think if I have it hooked that back up already then we can go ahead and start working on getting our body back on getting a shifter done and once that's all done battery and a gas tank and we're ready to ride we just gotta figure out what we're gonna do for a gas tank so let me sit and ponder on that a little bit get some of this engine work tied up here little odds and ends and then we'll get to putting our body on so let me get this done and I'll get back to y'all alright what's going on guys it is the next day didn't get a whole lot done yesterday um, wasn't feeling the greatest and kind of was real slow I get migraines a lot and when I get migraines I don't really want to weld too much because it affects my eye and you know it just amps up the migraines so um, I uh, paused yesterday after I finished the belt and the link just for the carburetor still have to get us a hose to go from the pump to the vacuum port and we still need to get us a gas tank but I think I figured out what we're gonna do for a gas tank if y'all had watched the channel previously you will remember the lawn cart well transmission didn't last the longest and uh, I think I'm kind of gonna go a different route now so um, this is probably going to get scrapped out. I wish the wind would quit blowing. But I think this is going to get scrapped out for now. Um, probably do something with it later. Might sell it. I don't know. Might part it out for another um, build. But I, like I said, I might I might try to sell it. So we will see. Of course, that don't fit on there. Yeah, we will see. I haven't quite made up my mind yet on what I'm going to do with this. But I do know that the engine I'm keeping, the seat I'm keeping. And the gas tank I'm for sure keeping. So, other than that, I might just let it go. Oh, and the chain. I'm probably going to end up needing that chain for the uh, go kart build. But yeah, um, let me know what you think I should do with this thing in the comments. I mean, it really was a cool idea just the transmission didn't go away B transmission didn't last like I wanted it to but we're gonna see what we could do with this gas tank and incorporate it on our new build because that's about the only gas tank I have so let's see what we could do and see where we can mount it that's gonna be the question all right so far for the day we have already cut off our rear gas tank assembly for the lawn cart. It is now welded onto our rack in the back. It's the best place for it. I don't want to have to relocate the battery and none of that crap. So gas tank here. I cut down our exhaust pipe. I cut the muffler off of it first and then I cut it down. We're going to put our tip coming up this way. Um, or at least try to. Uh, I'm going to kind of get that gas line out of the way so it doesn't heat up the gas line there. but. That's my idea is kind of coming like up in here and and out. And then our 
gas tank. I got a ratchet strap around it to keep it from flopping around. That'll be a permanent ratchet strap. Um, we got to run a gas line from that to the pump. I know it's higher than the carburetor, but since it's so far back, I'm still going to use a pulse pump just to be sure that I get the right amount of gas that I want every time. Um, and then we need to hook up our uh, vacuum port, of course. And we'll have uh, we'll have this thing ready to run. I should be able to hook a battery up, fire it up, run it, and uh, all that good stuff. And actually, technically, it's rideable except for the shifter and the fenders back on it. But let's go ahead and finish our exhaust finish cutting it, finish getting it back together, and then we'll go ahead and worry about running our gas line and, uh, you know, figuring out where it's going to go, putting fenders back on, doing a shifter linkage for it, and then we should be uh, getting close to tying this project up and getting on it and ready to ride. I can't wait. Back with some updates. As you saw, last tank was in place. Everything was welded. We have our janky fuel lines back on. We used part of the fuel lines from the uh, lawn cart build and combined them with fuel lines from this build. And they run all the way to the pump and then to the carburetor. All we need is our vacuum line, and we will be ready for fuel and a running engine. Um, we also returned our exhaust tip to this exhaust pipe. All we did was cut it and bring it down so it wouldn't be in the way of the tank. So now that's what it looks like. But hey, Everything's going to work out great, so with that being done, let's go ahead and get our vacuum hooked up and get our body back on it, and then we can figure out what we're going to do from, uh, you know, ooh, I don't know if that line's going to fit the way it is, I'll figure that out, um, but once we get our body on, then we can start going ahead and figuring out where neutral is on the shifter neutral is on the trans and then we can go ahead and start getting a shifter hooked up on this thing once we get a shifter she's ready to rock and roll all it needs is a hot battery so let's go ahead and get this done i think we can probably get it done in the next couple of days making headway <clears throat> we now have our janky ass vacuum system hooked up with a line that I found that is rock ass hard. It's all I have, so that's what I'm using. Um, I joined it together with a, a connector in there. I crimped on our starter wire better. I went ahead and welded on a bolt and drove that in as far as I could. Then realized I have a I had a exhaust gap in there where it caused a leak, so I welded that all the way around. We have our wire for our light hooked back up. Um, what else did we do? Our gas lines hooked up. We got our box secured to the fender covers up that big gaping hole where the gas tank used to be. There's a little bit there, but that's because of the seat. I don't want the seat to come back and get it. Um, we have all of our crap pulled off of our seat. We'll probably wrap it in a famous Flying Brian's Garage seat cover, which is a fucking garbage bag. Um, went ahead and put this back on to kind of cover that hole. I probably will come back later on and put something behind it to really cover it so the mud don't come up through there. Um, I was hoping for the rear end to stick out more on each side, but this was a short axled 
um, transaxle. So what that did was that actually set my wheels in more. But it's okay. It don't look too bad. It's not too far out from width. So we've about got our unit completed. We are lacking three things. One, shifter linkage. Got to get that shifter hooked up. Got to get that first to six neutral and reverse we need gasoline and a hot battery and she's ready to ride so I think what I'm gonna do tonight is go ahead go get the battery for this thing throw it on um, see if it kicks over Make sure all the wiring's right for the ignition and everything of that sort. Check my lights. Just check everything. And then, uh... And then maybe possibly start working on that shifter linkage. Because I'd like to get that done. Alright, guys. So, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. It is getting late. It is like 11 o'clock. Um... We're down to the bare minimum. We have... I had to switch out... Uh, switch on the dash for the light on the hood. Then we have our headlights. So all of our lights are working. This is our charging system switch. But we also have key working. Um, I'm not going to turn it over too much, but our switch deletes and our wiring was perfect. We still have our clutch safety, but I kind of like those, so I'm going to leave it. <clears throat> the exhaust sounds free, unlike that big, uh, muffler I had on there previously. Um, and looks like the battery has enough charge so tomorrow what we will be doing is the only thing left to do is shift linkage got to get it figured out and get some gas in it all right guys another day same project almost done um you might hear some music in the background it's friday you know people are kind of partying in the neighborhood. I hope it's low enough to where it doesn't get a copyright. Um, all I can say is I don't own any of the rights to any music being played in this video. Luckily, dude across the street from me with his box trucks running that old Chevy 350, so maybe that'll tune out the noise. Um, we got quite a bit done last night. These bees are killing me. <sighs> Eating holes in the damn stuff. Pissing me off. Alright, so. We're ready to throw some gas in this thing and see if it'll fire. I have a job to go do in about two hours. So I really need to be getting ready soon. Um, and I'm going to need this battery. But we can go ahead and see if this thing will run before I pull it, just to be sure. Uh, I'd like to hear it run and uh, all that good stuff before we even try to do anything else. So, let me check our oil, top this thing off with what it needs, um, and then we can go ahead and start putting some gas in the gas tank, see if our uh, pulse pump is going to pump the fuel like we need it to. Let me turn on some light for y'all. And then we can, or then I can go and do my job once we figure out this thing runs. And then come back tonight, finish the linkage up, and then probably tomorrow this thing will be on the ground and riding again. <laughs> So let's get into it. 
Alright, we're about to put some fuel in this thing, but I wanted to say something real quick. Um, be sure to check out part one. Part one is probably um, one of the easiest and one of the best off-road builds that I've done. Um, just a simple off-road build. It's really cool. It's actually, uh, you can see through the window in the office, it is actually on its way to being produced. And then it'll be online. I actually have um, those little pages at the ending where you can click on the little links. So I'm going to put it at the end of this video. Um, of course, y'all know this is part two. But, yeah. Part one will be at the end. So if you haven't seen part one, go check out part one. And, uh, promise to you it's a good one. So y'all be sure to go like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Let's get some gas in this thing. good too <laughs> all right well we know she's a runner that's a good engine oh wow that's a good engine it has the strength to pull that fuel I know she's gravity fed as is but you still got that flat part of the line that runs along the frame and then comes up so Oh, that needs to get a clamp, too. Leaking a little bit. But, hey. Heck of an improvement. She's a runner. Now, since we know all this, tonight we will come back um, after I get done with this job here I'm about to go do. Um, we'll get the shift linkage done and squared away get these little little leaks cleared up looks like I just need a couple of uh, clamps here and there it's understandable but the fact is that it runs Let's see if it fires up again Curious. That gum high compression. The valves might not be right because it don't seem like it's given the compression release that it needs to. Yeah. You yeah, fired right up. And just uh, probably didn't put enough fuel in it. And probably the leaks in the lines. 
are not helping the vacuum at all. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull this battery, go do this job. I will see you guys when I get back later this evening or tonight. Alright guys, it's been a couple days since I filmed anything for this video. Um, and it's night time so I can't write it yet, but I have finished the build. <clears throat> Here she is in all of her glory. We do have our shifter. Working. And then reverse. Um, I went ahead and took it off and sanded it down so it didn't have the automatic on it anymore or anything. So it's just a plain Jane. I also cut it out a little bit for the six gear to engage. Um, the only thing I have left to do here is figure out the wiring for the headlights they're a little wonky and I cut it on it shuts it off because I got it in this switch and I started deleting some um, sensors or the safety shut off switches and messed with that so but we got a new switch on the dash for our light in the front there that's the hood light we did wash this thing down really nice it looks really good we even got the headlights cleaned up what it looks like in all of its glory I rode it tonight and it is actually really fast so <clears throat> I'm gonna fix these uh, <clears throat> headlights well, I also went through with a torch torched a lot of the plastics back fresh and got the battery strap in and cleaned out the hood and all that good stuff but oh let me show you all the shifter too I had to extend it with a bolt but that is the shifter and that is the shifter so Works good. I got it welded all the way around. It's kind of hard to weld in there, but I got it in and uh, works great. So, <clears throat> like I said, I'm going to finish with my lights. And then, uh, let me zoom out of my ogre face. Um, we will finish our headlights. And then tomorrow, I'll come back out here with the camera. Set up a couple cameras in the driveway. And, uh... We'll scream up and down the driveway with this thing, see how fast we can get it. So, I'm gonna finish this lights and uh, see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, it is the next day. We have had our battery on charge all night. It kind of ran down on me last night when I was doing the wiring. I did figure out the lights and everything else. The safeties are all gone. Um, Everything has been bypassed and the wiring has been gone through so everything works as should um, I did ride this thing last night. It is pretty fast. It's not as fast as the beast Or more than likely the general um, But it's pretty quick It is pretty damn quick we did not change the size of the engine pulley but we did change the size of the transmission pulley and we went down a substantial amount so I've still got some low end gearing like in first and second gear but third fourth fifth and sixth screaming so I like it I think it turned out really nice honestly it's probably one of my nicest builds um, I didn't even know if I'd like the gas tank on the back but I do 
it's kind of unique and different and cool. I just need to find a way to maybe not have that strap on it so that my, my sticker will show. Um, other than that, it looks great. I'm really happy with it. The one thing I did figure out that I had missed, always check your work, guys. I missed the transmission mount last night. So I've got one installed. It's a little far from the uh, frame. I think I'm just going to weld it on there. And then, you know, I can just disconnect it. If I need to take the trans out, I can disconnect it from down low. So I think that's what we're going to do real quick is weld that on, get that secured. And then after that's done, we can actually ride this thing for the end of the video. And uh, we also need to bring the John Deere and the Beast up here for some maintenance. So we'll probably actually hook the trailer to this thing and then yank some mowers up here. We'll see how strong this thing is, see what it's capable of. So let's go ahead and fix this and get it finished so we can actually ride this thing and see what she'll do. So we got that thing running and just ripped it up and down the driveway. It's pretty damn fast. Actually about to start using it. Pull a couple things real quick in the video off. Um, we got to get a couple of uh, projects up here to the shop so I can start working on them. Um, we're going to finish up the Beast and we're going to finish up the John Deere which is going to Randy. So first off is the John Deere. We're going to pull it up there. And then we'll come back down here with the trailer and get the beast. And for an engine that sat in the woods for five years, this thing starts great.
so we got John Deere up here it is unloaded um, we already have our machine down there and we already have the beast loaded up so let's go check it out and get it up here all right so we got the beast all strapped down up on the trailer it's got a couple flat tires and things that we need to address like a belt system and the brakes kind of failed on me immediately so I need to address that and a couple other things but uh let's get it up here to the shop and we will work on it later beast up here darn that thing is uh that thing is strong it's real strong i'm actually impressed with it so let's get this off the trailer and uh i think that's gonna call it for this video so hope you guys enjoyed it all right we got the beast unloaded and in the shop for future work this thing is worth its weight in gold. I tell you what, that's probably one of the best zero budget builds I've done. Um, thanks to everybody that helped out. Um, Shaggy's small engines was a big help. Um, thank you for the transaxles. Definitely needed them around here. That is one strong unit now. It went from a um, lawn tractor to a garden tractor. It's now sitting at the same height as the mud slut, and it's about as beefy as the mud slut. The only thing that's better about this is it's got a lock transaxle. Other than that, it's pretty much the same mower now. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Sounds good, runs good, looks good, pulls good. I'm sure it's good in the mud, too. I'm not sure what those tires, but, you know, I'm sure it's good. That, uh, that, uh, high-performance engine didn't lie. It's 
high compression and it really makes a difference. That thing's got some got some power. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to go down there and leave a like and a comment if you want to say something, have a question or just anything. Um, Y'all can check out the Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, and the TikTok. And the only one that's different is the Snapchat. It's an avatar. The rest of them are the same profile picture as the YouTube channel. So you can go down and go to those platforms, go to the search engines, type in Flying Brown's Garage, and you should find me. We post different content to different platforms, so it's kind of like a sneak peek into the video, I guess. Um, be sure to uh, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. The button's like right there. Um, you can hit that all notification bell and you will be uh, notified every time I drop a new video. We've got some new stuff coming. We've got three projects in the shop. We are finishing the General Lee. We're finishing the Beast. We're doing a more for my buddy Randy, um, which is John Deere. Um, it's going to get ATV wheels and tires and all the good stuff. Uh, still got to pull the transaxle out and flush it and put new fluid in it. But other than that, we're going to hook that one up. And got some more projects coming along with the remodel on the shop. So y'all uh, be sure to stay tuned. Look out for those videos to drop and check out some of the older videos. And uh, I'd like to say thank you for the 200 subscribers on uh, YouTube channel. It's uh, starting to grow a little more and that's great. I know it's a slow process, but hey, it's good to see some growth. Um, the TikTok's uh, a little surpassed 350 now. Uh, big thank you for that. And uh, yeah, until next time, I will see you guys on the next episode.